Hello and welcome to Chakra Bros, episode number 11. Uh, we're back after a break. Uh, it's been, I think, three weeks. Um, we wanted to revamp some things. We had a lot of stuff going on. We had a lot of events. Uh, I'm Sam Riley. Joined by Zach Burrell. Yep. And uh, today, basically, let me give, for those of you that are new to the podcast, basically, what we are is we're a little different. What, we, what we're going to do is we're going to explain a little bit about what's going on in the community, uh, some local events coming up. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the metagame, we talk a little bit about certain cards that are coming up, um, and, and maybe a little bit about improving the community. Uh, we won't we won't go deep into all, all the things. We're like a quick podcast to fill you guys in on what you may have missed over the week. Um, so without further ado, we'll get started uh, with this weekend coming up is the pre-release. Uh, if you're a Tampa local, we have three pre-releases. We have Friday at midnight, which is not Thursday. It's basically, it's basically Saturday the 17th. Okay. Friday at midnight. Friday into Saturday. Correct. Sunshine Games. Um, I'll get you more information, but it is, it is that night. We'll be cubing uh, probably beforehand, so show up early, hang out, have fun. Then Saturday at 2 p.m. at Cool Stuff. I know the information on that one. I know that that one's only $25, and it's the first 45 spots. Is that correct, Zach? Uh, unless it's more than last time, it should be 45. 45 spots, and they, will, yeah, they will sell out. The great thing about that one, too, is that the... The payout is quite high for a twenty-five dollar entry tournament, which is very right. good. And then, if we have enough kits, we're going to run it back Sunday at Sunshine Games at five p.m. Um, and if yeah. not, we will be playing constructed, um, probably Opus Four constructed. But who knows? It's not sanctioned, so we'll yeah. Probably... I mean, Sunday's our normal day for uh, playing constructed tournaments. For anybody who is still unaware, uh, in the Tampa area, uh, sweet location, highly recommended. Yeah, and be, before we move on with the other events, there are a few more events. I do want to cover Sealed real quick. Uh, for those okay. that haven't played Sealed, uh, you're going to get, in this instance, you're going to get six packs. Uh, turn, Japan's still getting nine packs, but over here in the United States... Oh, wait, are gonna, they really? It's yes. different? Yep. Over wow. here in the United States, we're going to get six packs, and you're going to build a deck out of six packs. A uh, little bit of modified rules. Uh, for example, you can take six damage, and then you die, not seven. That's yeah. really important to know. Um, yes, it is. <laughs> and then also, yeah, and then also... You can play any. You can pay it with any type of CP to play your backups. Uh, that makes cards that like that makes backups that are like things like Shantoto, which aren't in the set. But Shantoto devout. Those type of backups are actually really crazy because you can be play them in any colors. Um, but you can play any CP to pay for those backups. But all your other cards' abilities costs must be paid with the correct CP. Right, right. Uh, Sets forward summons monsters, etc. Yep, you're going to build a 40 plus card deck. What that means is you can put 40, 41 cards. You could put 72 cards in there. And you put all of them in. <laughs> yeah, you, you can't put 73. You can't, you can't put your, your promo lightning in. Um, right. But you could basically, the lower amount of cards you play, the, the more chances you are to better draw your better cards. So you'll probably be around 40, 41 cards. Uh, I found um, in my sealed practice that you want anywhere between 10 to 14 backups. Um, it yeah, really yeah, depends. That about right. Yeah, I played I think fourteen or fifteen in my last deck, or maybe it's my wife played that one. But she also had like she had, she had like the six drops in total before. She had a couple right. of big five drops that she wanted to be able she to play. Needs the backups to progress into right. Like, um, payoff cards. Right, and some other tips for you guys that haven't played sealed is your opponent may open these types of things. They might open these bomb uh, legendary rares. Uh, yep. You should be prepared. Don't skimp out on your your removal. Um, and don't just use your removal to kill the first thing that pops up. You're going to want to be able to like save it to kill the things that are necessary. Those of you that have drafted yeah. other games or done sealed with other games, you guys know that. So. Yeah, cards that do multiple things are very important too. Like if, say you were drafting, or sorry, if you're in sealed with like a BV legend, like that's a very good card. It's, it's removal and it's a body. So yeah, things th like that. Are I think if I was cool. drafting, I would first pick a VV because yeah, I absolutely. think it's that strong. And if, if I opened VV, I think I'd be very excited. Right, uh, yeah. Obviously, that's Opus 4 or, or that's Opus 3, but... Yeah, the, but then just an example of kind yeah. of the kind of utility you're looking for. This actually is going to be a pretty sweet set, because if you open something like the Glazia Lobolus, like the Doom Train Summon, yeah. like that's got four different options. Any of these cards that have, like, choose two out of four, like those effects are super versatile in various matchups, so it's going to be actually pretty sweet, I think, to see uh, what kind of decks come out of this uh, sealed format. Yeah, like, I'd be super excited to open Echo. We'll talk more about Echo, oh, I'm Echo. sure. Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, so b but before we get to those, I know a lot of people are talking about uh, yeah. spoilers, so we'll try and keep that on the light side. 
But we do want to shout out to the Ohio Petite Cup, which is coming up here uh, next, not this weekend, but next weekend. Um, uh, release the day after release. So the day after release. So five will be legal. So get your hands on pre-orders and whatever you can. Yep. Um, I know when I was I was planning on possibly attending, I ended up not being able to because of work. But uh, they offered, like if I want to do my pre-order through their store, <laughs> they'll have it there for me to pick up when I get there for like uh, the Friday before. Um, yeah, yeah, that's sick. So too. you can actually have your pre-orders go there. And, and get, get that done now too, because I'm pretty yes. sure with so many people yeah. attending, like they're yeah, they're ordering. exactly. I mean, this is actually just really, really great advertisement for their their store, right? Awesome. Like because yeah. if you want Opus Five for for your Petite Cup, you have to pre-order through them to get it on time, which is yeah. really unless you just want to have yeah. some kind of bomb pack opening at midnight or something like that. Yeah. So then we have the Cars of Evil East one year tournament coming up. That's ten dollars. It's all the entry is going towards the the top cut. That is March 31st, is that correct? March yeah. 31st, yep. Yeah, yeah. And we'll post the address here later. Um, but all the, the price is going towards the top cut. I think like first place gets uh, 40%, second place gets 30%, and it play arts. But first place also gets a trophy. Uh, so it's a super sweet prize. Yeah, it's James Lockwood's tournament. We're super excited. I, I'm going to be there. I think Zach's going to be there. Oh, yeah. No, I'll probably be there. Yep. Okay. And then we're going to see about Angel being there. I'm pretty sure Angel's going to be there, too, if he's not working. So super excited about that. And then we have Boston, which is April 6th or 7th. Um, myself, Jonathan, and Andy Carmona, who was the Tampa Petite Cup winner, uh, will be traveling Ooh, two for that. Cup champions traveling together. <laughs> two, yep. Traveling and testing together. So hopefully we can put up some results. That's at PAX. So yeah. that's going to be super busy, super interesting. It will be the first Opus 5 regional event that I'm aware of since all the Australian events have been Opus 4. Mm -hmm. um, it'll, probably, it'll be North America's first competitive level event, right? Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of really cool stuff that's happening. Yeah, we had that. nationals, but like our first and this year's circuit right. to earn your way up right, yeah. to the nationals this year and eventually the world's just the final goal. Right. Exactly. So <laughs> that, that's coming up. Um, so check yeah. out those things. Um, as far as like, we'll talk, move into like talking about the metagame a little bit. Uh, right now I'm something like, so I was 34 and one when I wrote this, I have since played in two events, three, I think I'm something like 54 and two with, uh, the Milano monsters deck. Um, yeah, well, Zach, you edited a little bit, though, right? I, I did, yeah. I made some changes. But, Zach, you ended up playing it and then only lost to me in the mirror, right? Right, I only lost the mirror. Like, yes. Yeah. No then, match really felt hard. Like, there were there right. were a couple that it wasn't easy, easy, but, like, it, I never felt out of it ever. Yeah, the, the deck is... so many answers, yep. so many tools. I would say um, the deck is one of the harder decks I've ever piloted. As far as it decision choices, a lot of decisions, yeah, because a lot of times you have to discard more than you really want to to keep the backups up for your monsters. So it's right, yeah, definitely uh, a mentally taxing deck at times. Yeah, I've Squeeze won. I won my Dark Sphere uh, match with it, and I won my uh, Untapped match with it, um, mm -hmm. as well as playing the locals events with it. And then Angel played it last night. Um, played my list last night, uh, and split the finals with me. Um, right. The deck is just absolutely insane. If if you want to play an insane deck. For the next week, you get one more week before it won't even matter anymore. But you could play yep. uh, Kirasama's Monster List. It's from Milano. We will probably link it. You can look it up in FF Decks. It's yep. pretty insane. Um, but we'll, we'll move on because there there is there was a there was a lot of people that don't like when we play that deck locally, right? Yeah, it's, uh, it's the first time since such playing as unfair yeah. or like the monsters are annoying and unfair, like. They're not, they're not interact. They're not interact. Them. They're not interactive. Was what I heard. You know, so there are. So talking about that, I kind of move into like a, talking about like a healthy community. Uh, something we've been doing locally here is cubing. Uh, a lot of people still ask me what is cubes. I get messages every day. Actually. It's a weird term to use, honestly. Like, it, it is. And it comes. I don't from, know where it originated. Yeah. But. It originates from magic. I'm not sure exactly well, where. I know that, but I mean, like, why the shape of a cube is what they decided for. Yeah, I, I, I don't actually know. I don't know. But anyway, basically what it is is you have uh, all of the best cards, the, the, the most fun yeah. cards, and you shuffle them all together, and you build mm -hmm. sealed decks out of them, or you draft decks out of them. Yeah. Um, Angel and I practice a couple of sealed with them, too, just to kind of get back into the sealed format uh, rhythm. Yeah. Uh, it's super fun. 
Uh, if you built a cube, it's not free because you have a lot of expensive cards in there and you have to right. sleeve everything and take care of it. But yep. it is something free for the community to do. And so and it's got a lot of replay value. Like, yeah. I had, you get a different archetype every time unless you're trying to force something. Even then, you might not get the cards you need. Right, so, yeah. Like, I actually. Fly and yep, I forced type zero cadets. And the deck was actually really? pretty good. Yeah, it was actually the deck was really sweet. Um, I can imagine that. I mean, I've, if you like, because we can, you can fix your. You're playing a cube version in which you can use the one drop evokers and summoners from Opus yeah, One yeah. to kind of even out your color distribution so that you can actually play yeah. your cards. Um, then actually, it's pretty cool because it lets you focus on like maybe some bigger threats you might not normally because you don't have enough backups that you've drafted. So it's, yeah. I think that's a pretty sweet addition. Yep. But, so if, uh, if you guys have any questions about Cube, uh, message one of us. We'll, we'll fill you in on a Cube. It's uh, it's a ton of fun. It's it's evolutionary. It changes every every time a Cube. I make a couple of cuts. I add a couple of cards. Opus Five coming out. I'm gonna make a lot of changes. I'm sure. Um, it's it's such a blast. Uh, I think I have a hundred percent hit rate on playing Gramus, Alcid, and Raiden so far. Oh, really? <laughs> I, oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so <laughs> I, another thing that uh, we've been doing in our community locally here is, is, and it's not such so much incentive for players like myself um, who tend to like grind. I, I put a lot of testing in, so I have a lot of experience. Uh, so I get less out of this. But what the newer players are really enjoying that we're doing is a pack per win, pack per entry. So yep. basically the... When we go play, for in particular at Sunshine Games, we pay $5. With our entry, mm -hmm. we get a pack. That includes Opus 1, Opus 2, Opus 3. Yeah, whatever um, pack you want, whatever he's yeah, got you on the shelf. One pack for entry. Right and then you get one pack for every single win. That includes right. a buy. So if you lose round one, you have nine players, and you get that, that buy. You, you know, you're miserable. You just lost the round one. You already have a buy. <laughs> you get another pack. So now you've paid $5. You get two packs. Get that cardboard happiness. Yeah, it's super sweet. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, once you have, and once you have two packs, like even if you get only one win, you're already plussing on your tournament entry. Exactly. And you get promos for entry. And you get promos for entry, right. So pack per win, pack per entry. The other thing is, is this really moves the store's product. So yes, they're, mo they're moving the product because so what, what ends up happening is we play this. Um, we, we started at 5 o'clock. We finished by 7.30 and everyone wants to do it again. So we run it back yep. two, at least another time, sometimes a third time. We run these back and you guys like did the third time once, Jesus. Yeah. So people are just like super excited because they get to it, it's just so valuable for the players. And again, the store is is rotating through products so quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, which is sweet. The other thing I I, I want to mention real quickly is for some of you more competitive players, um, is switching decks sometimes. So I had like for example, you yeah. know, when people weren't they weren't enjoying when I was playing for soy all the time. Uh, <laughs> I mean they could just play Emperor and some Inwoos. To, to cover themselves or whatever. But, you know, it became pretty stale just waiting with the Soya, so we switched it up and blah, blah, blah. Same thing's happened Same with, with the, the monster. Same thing's happened with the monster deck. Exactly what my point was, is the monster deck that we're playing right now uh, from the the Milano Win Winter Cup is actually just insane. Um, Absolutely. And a lot of people think like, like certain decks have good matchups against it. I haven't found a single deck that I'm scared of. I have, yeah, how do you, I have how played do you with over 50% Emperors and the monster okay. deck just does not care about Emperor. Uh, not in no. this version. You have too many how, answers. How do you feel about the so the two decks that finished above it in the bracket were Mono Ice Ice Fire? How do you feel about those either of those having beaten it and then it's matched against the other in the uh, in Milano? So that's so I, I I don't know. So some people the, the the people that I've played against online with it said they seem to be surprised that I beat them. And they're like, well, I was told I had a good matchup, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. They, they knew what they were going to play. If they knew that I was going to be playing that Monsters deck. It's very much my style, and it's no secret that I'm on Kurosawa's Monster deck. Uh, but the thing is, is that I don't think that any deck right now has a good matchup to it. I, I, when I was trying to design a deck that would beat it, the closest I could get was Wind Water with, like, three three archers, um, some sort of, like... Ritz so that they can't Valfor and things like that. At that um, point, are you trying to play like, uh, or would, were you just slotting in Alexander's just to answer the monsters too? Like, no, to I didn't want to go too deep. No, because Alexander's just not a good card like uh, in any other circumstance. So I right. probably would play a card like it recycles. But yeah. sure, yeah, but it it draws it draws a card for two CP, which is it. So you're down. It does not have a backup though. It doesn't have a backup, so you're down one CP though. Right. So, but but still. 
you know, so so the deck doesn't feel fun to play against. I'll admit that. I will say that the mirror matches are the most fun I've had playing Final That's Fantasy insane. besides <laughs> cubing. Like it, they're just so interactive. And you have to play so smart, and your opponent you'll always get Chaos Walkered, and they'll never have a forward um, to play for free. You don't yeah. even have, you could just discard your your units. They're not relevant whatsoever in that matchup. You're definitely not bouncing their realm. You're not bouncing their gal. So, There's no real recursion. Right. No. And like anytime you activate a fo- anytime you activate a monster, you know it's gonna get fan uh, you know that yep. you know that whenever you cast your Shantoto, they're gonna realm your monster to to kill your own monster too. So it's it's a lot of fun, but it's not fun to play against unless you're very experienced with it. So what we've been doing is we've been switching some decks and playing some fun decks. Um, yep. Zach tried that last night. Uh, he mm-hmm. played like a really <laughs> fun, cute Muba deck. Yeah, so I was playing uh, Fire Ice, but not your typical Fire Ice. Uh, it was basically 13 two-drop backups and three devouts. Um, and I was trying to power out uh, Moomba, uh, six different Shivas, the one-drop included, one-drop Ifrit, all these like little tiny chip damage effects with a bunch of first strike forwards like Laguna, Shadow. Uh, I had the two-drop Ninja in there. It was actually pretty sweet. Yeah. And I had the Red Mage backup that makes whenever forward takes damage. Uh, you can make Increase. it 1k for the turn. Yeah. So Moomba is a straight up just kill whatever I point at. Uh, the ninja does 3k on its trigger plus 5k first strike. And you have but no, it, no actual Palin though, right? Or did you have Palin? Uh, no Palin because it's just a it's, it gets a target painted on its back. Real Interesting. Quick. Yeah. Um, it does combo very well with Moomba, but. Oh, absolutely. I just wanted more sources of first strike as well. Yeah. I, yeah. So, but the other advantage for those of you. Um, that do want to switch decks is you also get better just playing other other cards too. I think it's really important too. Um, but anyway, so let's just launch straight into spoilers. Uh, All right. Talk a little bit. We're not going to go super in deep because everyone's doing that right now. Maybe just name a couple. Zach, what are your favorite right now? What are your favorite spoilers? Um, I don't know if I could rank them. I don't even know if these are my absolute favorites, but one I'm really excited to play with is Porum. That's probably, it's up there for one of my favorites right now. Um, the four drop EX burst 5k. Uh, when she enters, you look at your top three, pick a card, put the other two on the bottom. Yeah, and which then, we figured out is anticipate. You need to anticipate. Yes, anticipate magic, from magic. Yeah. Uh, and then you can pay one of any color CP uh, and dull her to cancel any action ability. <clears throat> so these are things like Shadow's active uh, action ability, Garnet casting a spell. You can cancel that extra, that two uh, water to make it awkward if they're playing like Cyclops or something. Um, you can. There's so many weird little things you can cancel the vow. Um, people have to really play careful around Forum uh, because there's, it's really easy to forget what is an action ability. Like maybe for planning on your last card in your hand and you have Ash on defense, you think you're going to be able to pitch it to activate her. Forum just stops that. So, so there's, a, there's, a, there's a new colon destroyer. Yes, there is. <laughs> uh, well, sort of because they're, you know, special but, still. But, it, but, but except for it doesn't get her on specials, right? Right. Right. So, um, so Forum's up there. I really like Echo, the four drop. Sure. Uh, yeah, Let's talk Echo. about why we like Echo. Why do we like Echo? Um, so you look at it and you're like, all right, choose one forward, activate it. Cool, that's good. Uh, maybe you're swinging out. It's a really tough forward state, but you don't want to leave your guy not on the fence. You can swing, reactivate it after, sure. Uh, choose a backup. Maybe you have a really impactful action ability, but you need to use it for TP for the turn. Um, like say you're on two backups, you play her, pitching one card. You can untap maybe like a devout or something, playing Ice Wind, something like that. Um, Scry, which from magic means look at top card. You may keep that top around the bottom. Uh, that is cool. Uh, you can fix that next effect, which is draw a card. So it has all the stuff that works late game, but also if you play it, if you're forced to play it on turn one, it's not horrible because you can use the last two effects. So you look at the top card, see if you want it, and then you can draw it or draw whatever's below it. And the card's replacing itself. Uh, a lot of people would consider that it's just a two CP backup because it's replacing itself like that. Um, but it has a little bit of selection built in. So I think it's sweet at all stages of the game. Um, whether or not it's going to be uh, pushed out, because maybe there's just more powerful things we need to be doing, but I think it's sweet, and I really enjoy it. Yeah, uh, and, then, and then let's be real, too, about um, what about with Fasoya? Oh, absolutely. It's an EX burst, too. So not only is it an EX burst, it activates <laughs> So it does two yeah, things. It activates for Fasoya once. It takes the t- it checks the top card before you use yep. Fasoya. Uh, so if you were to want to use it again, it can activate Fasoya. So you can check the top card and, and activate, activate Fasoya. Yep. Like 
Yeah, I mean, I think that it does everything you've wanted to do. For a while, we wanted to play for Soya deck with like uh, Diablos. Um, what, what was the three? The other, the two drop um, when Val, Valfour, the two drop Valfour, right? That does three thousand everything. Oh yeah, yeah. And then uh, on tap flops, you want to play? Yeah. So there, there's a ton of cards. Well, specifically in wind. There's a ton oh, in wind, you're saying? Yeah, oh there's yeah. There's a ton of cards that were leading us towards wind for for Soya decks. Things like the Aerith. Um, which are untapped for sure as well. Um, Even the new Alexanders would be kind of sweet. Yeah, you know, no, I agree. I found yeah. a lot of value with all these standard unit decks where the standard right. units are just dumb 11k two drops. You yeah. just five drop Alexander and kill it. Like, <laughs> right, yeah. And, and another reason to move into wind for for Soya decks is I think that you're going to take you're going to take damage obviously with Soya deck. That is the goal. The, right. the, op the open year takes some other damage. And then later on, what happens is, and in Final Fantasy, you know, you only have seven damage. What happens is later on in the game, you're afraid to attack because you have to worry about things like Shiva, um, you know, just bouncing right. your guys, ways that they can push their damage that you weren't ready for, and your Farsoi is dead. However, yeah. in the wind deck, you actually have a ton of ways to activate things or to air the planet protector them to stop them from being bounced. Yeah, you can play dual. a YRP engine if you want. So yeah, you so, to exactly. So you ramp, a, get a body to block on defense, which is important, and draw a card. Yeah, you have a ton of ways to stop them from blowing you out there. And then you also have the ways to will or to win in the mirror match, for example, you can Riku, uh, you can mug. You just have a lot of ways to like Wait, attack them on different accesses yeah. where yeah. normally you feel like you don't have enough forwards in the deck. So it's it's really hard to win at that point. But in the win version you could at least have a different access to you could mill them. It's actually a pretty reasonable way to win. Yeah, actually. Uh that's how you got your one loss, right? With the monsters deck, is he yeah. just killed you like every turn? Well, I have I have two losses with the monster deck. I uh, I lost last night. Yeah, yeah, I lost. I lost in. I actually still ended up in first seed, which is funny. But uh, James ended up in second. But James beat me in the last round of Swiss uh, because I had I needed one more turn to kill him, and I build out because I had drawn yeah, two cards. Just did it every turn. Just yeah, he recouped me every single yeah. turn. Uh, and he's played, and he's now played against the monster deck enough. James Howland knows I'm gonna re I'm gonna recoup every single turn. Sometimes he should not recoup and play something, and he recoups anyway because he's just like uh, the only way I win is I really. Uh, so yeah, so I'm super excited. That's one of the reasons I'm super excited about Echo. It just does it. It literally does everything you've ever wanted a backup to do in the Fasoya deck. I my only problem with it is that it's a backup. <laughs> Because yeah, right. it does, there's just not a lot of room. A lot of times you're trying to play Echo, you're trying to play Geomancer, or the, you yeah. know, H and Toto, Aerith. There's for Soya, obviously. There's you usually have you need one Cosmos to help you know smooth out your draws. There's so much you want to do. I don't know how much room you have for it. But. I think I was I made this comment last night. The because of just the density of cards we're getting now into the fifth set, there may be actually almost an all EX deck available, if not maybe 35 or 40 cards out of the 50, and any other ones can be your Cosmos, your oh, Shinto, Careful, whatever. man. Careful, dude. So, you're going to pump some egos here. Yeah, right. So, like, high EX saturation, you might not need a card like Geomancer, because you're going to yeah. get something, you just might not be able to fix exactly what effect. Right, yeah. But that may be worth that backup slot to get that a and ex burst and b you're at least drawing a card or doing something yeah like you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna otherwise you're gonna use your geomancer to pull your other geomancers on bottom like that's right. that's eventually exactly. the purpose of your geomancers yeah Which um is i'd say one more card for me just because sure. i i want to hear your thoughts on it i know we've talked about the card and you think yeah. it's powerful i agree it's powerful kind of hard to argue it isn't sure um I'm gonna butcher the pronunciation eldnarsh is that the sixth guy the six drop legend dark the 10k that whenever it leaves the field, uh -huh. keyword leaves, yeah, return so it to your hand instead. You so can't, you can't. Shantoto goes back to hand. Shantoto and Leviathan, technically already going back to hand, but goes back to hand. Famprit makes you put it in the break zone, back to hand. The only way to deal with this card is to discard it out of their hand. Yeah. So unless you're against ice or wind, excuse me, right now anyway, I don't know if there's going to be a cross color kind of discard effect, but it's going to be really hard to get rid of that card. And yeah. sure, they have to pitch one every turn at least because you only have five backups. So you draw your card for turn, pitch, well, two cards for turn, pitch one, dull four, play it again. But like at some point, that's going to be really hard to deal with, especially if you, it's like, yeah. Next to if, this card, if this card wasn't a 10,000 power forward, I would say it doesn't stand a chance. 
right. but it's it's a it's a whole CP cheaper than Minerva. Um, yep. You it's can't, a 10k. Yeah, you can't deal with it as easily as you can deal with Minerva. Like, if, if Minerva had this guy's ability, then I think Minerva would see infinite, infinite play. Like, this right. is so good. Like, this guy just doesn't die. But he is competing with the other five drop that uh, protects itself and goes and gets a dark card. Well, that card's sweet, absolutely. Yeah, I just, competing uh, with Emperor. I, 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 I don't know. The, answer, the, 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 the obvious answer is that it's very powerful. Why not both? Kamalanu or Kamala no searches for Ilnarsh and you turn him into a different element. As long Ilnarsh. as you're playing your poo poos and your moogles, yeah. You just make sure you well, cover he yourself. He turns into a different color though. He so does. You know yeah. Right, but like yeah. again, there's other cards like you're you're still competing with Emperor, right? right. Like, you're still competing with Zidane. Zidane is like still a oh. very very good card. Terra, <laughs> Light Terra is still insane. The Emperor is an ice card. Uh yeah, yeah, <laughs> the ice card. Yeah, yeah. I actually like that card too quite a bit. Um. So you know, the card that I this is gonna sound crazy. I'm so excited for Hilgigas. Like, oh the, yeah, no, absolutely. Like the, so it's the one CP monster that just man, it, it cancels their 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 effects, their activated effects, and then breaks their character. Yeah, character too. So monsters yeah. and backups also get blown up by. Not to mention you obviously get this back with Sid Wolf, or you also get it back with Gal. Like. You find it in the realm. It, it's so cheap. And let's say you do this and you have a mirror on the board and you're just like, okay, well, the next one you activate, it's going to get broken too. I know. It seems nuts. Um, it's the same thing I was saying with Forum. Yeah. People have to be really conscious of what they're doing, if it's an activated ability or a special or not, like whatever they're doing. Because people are still confused sometimes. Like, oh, what, what's considered an action ability? Like, you could really get got with this card. Yeah, like you go to Red Mage something, like you can't block and you're going for a game or something. Right, cancel, and, break your Red Mage. Like, sure, break your Red Mage. <laughs> and yeah. then they're like, uh-oh. And, and so normally, normally I'm not a big fan of these, these, these cards where your opponent gets to choose for you. Like the Firebomb right. that explodes whenever they play a forward. It's like, well, they grenade, can play a yeah. Yeah, grenade, they can play a weaker forward. He'll, he'll get this different because it isn't just it's, – it's, so it's one CP. It's so free that it's, it's just – Virtually free, basically. It breaks their forward. They, 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 they have to have an active ability that plays around this. And for me, the most important part is the fact that I feel like Ishtola was going to be a pain in the butt for Shantoto. Uh, and now you can just play your Hill Gigas first. And now they can't even they can't even Ishtola your Shantoto to counter it, which is nuts. Oh, they can, then she just dies. They can. It, just doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't work so well for them. Right. Um, yeah, because it does counter even if the cards yeah. are on the field because it's correct. Yeah, weird. yeah. It's the one action ability. The last card that I'm really, really, really excited for, and this should come to no surprise, is Cecil. Oh, boy. oh can I say Buckaboo? I'm like, oh, Buckaboo I am excited for everyone else's. But yeah, but no, Cecil, right? Yep. So Cecil has, like, first off, an obvious synergy with Fasoya, which makes me really, really excited. Yep. But it's actually the its interaction with Tama that has me most excited. Being able to play Cecil twice more is insane to me. So, like, you kill their guy, it trades, it's it's already a 9k, you play Tama, you get it back, you kill their guy. Oh, it is a 5, I was thinking it was a 6 for some reason. No, it's like, a 5 drop. <laughs> That's silly. So, then if they ever kill it, well, you just Tama it back in, and you kill their guy again. Like, yeah. before we had Delita, uh, Brandalus, um, Opus 4 Delita... None of those things. None of those things even see that seem that exciting to. Right. Like the, the the most the best thing you can Tama back is either Dataluma or Rubon. Well, Delita is pretty good. I mean, five drop Delita. Yeah, it, it, having dealt them multiple times. It's not bad. It's not bad. And I saw you do it in Cube, and it was nuts. It was very good. <laughs> but <not> good. <laughs> but it's nowhere near the difference of what, what's going to happen when we start Tama in the Cecil. Right? Am I right? Like this. Right. No, that was the turn. Yeah, I played Delita and Minerva and said go after their Shantoto. Yeah, I, I have no doubt that there could be some sort of control deck just playing um, hitting those Cecils. So here's here's two thoughts. Uh, a, the expert is obviously sweet. You already talked about that. But the S ability does not require a dull. So if you have no, one already yeah. in hand, and, like, you can just do it. Like That's insane. Right, so you can actually stack it. So when it comes into play, you can put yeah. that ability on the stack, then yep. use his special... Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and and then it killed two guys for the plus one point of damage. Like, although the only thing is you can't choose the target. If it, oh, I know you can. It doesn't require you to. Right. Okay, it doesn't fulfill on 
Okay, yeah, never mind. It does work like that. That's insane. Okay. Right? Yeah, it's insane. You could just stack it, take one point, and kill two guys. I was thinking one forward with that cost. So they say that yeah. that's not on res or take and, that and, that's not. And in this deck, you could just Tama it back. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and then you... Oh, man, I just... I think I'm, I'm more excited about Cecil than I am about basically anything that is a legend all the time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'm not sure what you're trying to get at. That it's supposed to be that good? Well, I'm saying, like, it's good. It's interesting because sometimes I feel like the legends are pretty lackluster and other times... Sure, like the last, the la the last card that felt that good to me was Locke, which was Legend. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think of another like, card that How do you feel about like, Ishtola being Legend? Like, she's powerful. I love the effect. I mean, she stops Shantoto. Like that's yeah, that's that's where she's that's where she's good at, right? She she's legendary because she stops Shantoto. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, <laughs> Meta, Meta look, rarities. I I know that there's I, I have no doubt that nine out of ten local players will jam Ishtola week one for us. Uh, they don't like that we play a lot of Shantoto. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna be jamming Ishtola, and then I'm gonna be jamming Hilgigas <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, there's no there's no doubt that my my week one deck will probably have Hilgigas, Cecil, and Tom in it. Like, yeah, those cards right. are just too good. Uh, anyway, so before we leave, we're gonna leave off. Uh, Zach's gonna leave you guys with a question every time, something to think about, something to talk about. Uh, Zach, go ahead. Uh, so, question for this week uh, is. Given the vast array of information we have, so we have tournament results, we have Facebook chatter, we have local results. Why are regions still so diverse when it comes to their meta? Because we see some decks being favored in other regions compared to others, right? Like, so EU versus NA versus uh, Australia versus yeah. Japan. Uh, like, looking at tournament results, right? So, right now, which I love, two of the regionals in Australia have been won by strong sword decks, right? Around here, yeah. And there's that, no way to get away with that. That's not to mention that the last competitive environment last year, the last regional was also won by Golbez, by Vince playing Golbez, right? Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, that was a sweet deck. That was Fusoya, though, too. It was so. Fusoya, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then like Milano, uh, let me make sure, yeah, Milano, that was Ice Fire, Ice in the top, tons of ice. And then you come to yeah. NA, and it's a lot of water based decks. Uh, Water wind, wind particularly. Yeah, water wind mainly. Uh, then maybe some monsters, some ice fire sprinkled in. And then you go to Japan and it's like all water, right? Like it's right. Mo the monster deck that you pioneered in the beginning, uh, and their takes on that. It's I find it so interesting. I wonder why everyone else might think that is. Uh, I think there's obviously some surface level answers, like such as uh, not having access to cards to be able to play with a Oh, like that's a fair answer, but I think it's deeper than that. Like, it's, yeah, it's it, the point it, it doesn't solve the more. it doesn't solve the question of why does Golbez keep winning in Australia? Like, right. <laughs> you can counter Golbez very easily. Why does water do so well all the time in Japan when you can counter yeah. water very easily? Same thing. Like right. the UK is just filled with players dominating with ice. Like uh, Joshua and Birch just can't be stopped on ice. It's just you know it's just not happening. <laughs> Jamie Faulkner just can't be stopped. Toby can't be stopped on these ice decks. It's, yep. you know, but I, I, it does seem weird. It's like, it's like, well, you can counter those decks. Just why aren't people doing it? But those, those things keep winning the same events, right? Yep. And yeah. if you know that those people are so strong in the element, you can kind of hedge towards it. Cause if you're more afraid of the higher profile people, you might want to hedge towards being able to beat them. So that you can actually get to the top yourself. Yeah. Uh, so to put it more succinctly, uh, we have tons of information available to us. We know what's doing well. Why are our metas either staying with what they enjoy or why are they not updating based on what they see? And I think that's an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I don't know the answer to that. I actually want to talk more about that next week and once we see what people think about it. My initial guess would be that when you see a deck do well, for example, I first saw Golba as the water... Lightning Golbez do well at a cool stuff report here in Tampa. It was before mm -hmm. I played uh, Final Fantasy. It was during Opus 2. Or no, it was right at the beginning of Opus 3. I had just yep. bought some stuff. I hadn't played it, and it won the 1K here, and I had never played Final Fantasy. That was the first deck I was I gravitated towards. I have never yep. left loving Golbez since then. And same, you know, you like your no no backups, Golbez. I will never favor that, because my first love was with a Golbez deck with backups. 
with water packers specifically, um, and especially artemisian, so make sure you always have it. And so I will always favor those things. But I think that there's a certain sort of comfort zone, and the, the good players are always going to play their deck the most comfortable with. The UK right. players are just comfortable on ice. They know that ice is good. They keep playing. The Japan players know they, they value the long resource game. They're going to keep playing that. And I don't know what's up with the Aussies. we got to talk to Vince. we got to talk with Chris. <laughs> but some right. reason they keep letting Golbez win. Um, if I could figure out how to always win Golbez, then maybe I'd come back to it. Right. Yeah. But that's interesting. Yeah, anyway, so that's going to be it for us. Uh, Angel wasn't able to join us this week. Uh, he had some important family stuff coming up, but he should yeah. be with us next week. Uh, so, real quick. And he will have his own segment as well now. He will, yeah. He'll have he'll have the segment where he talks about a very specific card that, he's, that he fell in love with. I'll tell you, this week it was supposed to be Horn. Uh, yeah. Because he played the monster deck, he played uh, the Kurosawa's, Kurosawa's, mm-hmm. not Kurosawa, Kurosawa's monster deck. Different difference there um and he <laughs> thought horn was exceptional it was very good the deck i think it was very good the deck um so but he will have his own spotlight yes um that being said it only takes you guys one second to go down and subscribe to our channel uh like our facebook page these things really help us to know that you're listening you care yep. we love when you guys message us we have tons of messages right. about like deck lists awesome. and things to do just stay in touch with us that's all we want um we're super excited. We're super happy to be back. Uh, if you have a suggestion for next week's episode, please let us know right away. Yep, absolutely. Uh, yep. Uh, Always and, going to adapt. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'm Sam Riley. Zach Burrell. And we'll see you guys later. <laughs>